Elia Galla Placidia, daughter of the Roman Emperor Theodosius I, was the regent for Emperor Valentinian III from 423 until his majority in 437, and a major force in Roman politics for most of her life. She was consort to Artulf, king of the Goths from 414 until his death in 415, and briefly empress consort to Constantius III in 421. One, family. Placidia was the daughter of Roman Emperor Theodosius I and his second wife Galla, who was herself daughter of Emperor Valentinian I and his second wife Justina. Her older brother Gratian died young. Her mother died in childbirth in 394, giving birth to John, who died with their mother. Placidia was a younger, paternal half-sister of Emperors Arcadius and Honorius. Her older half-sister Pulcheria predeceased her parents as mentioned in the writings of Gregory of Nyssa, placing the death of Pulcheria prior to the death of Elia Flaxilla, first wife of Theodosius I, in 385. Early life Placidia was granted her own household by her father in the early 390s and was thus financially independent while underage. She was summoned to the court of her father in Mediolanum during 394. She was present at the Odysseus of death on January 17, 395. She was granted the title of Nobilissima Puella during her childhood. Placidia spent most of her early years in the household of Stilicho the Vandal and his wife Serena. She is presumed to have learned weaving and embroidery. She might have also been given a classical education though no details are known. Serena was a first cousin of Arcadius, Honorius and Placidia. The poem, In Praise of Serena, by Claudian and the Historia Nova by Zosimus clarify that Serena's father was an elder Honorius a brother to Theodosius I. According to De Consulatu Stilichonus by Claudian, Placidia was betrothed to Eucherius, only known son of Stilicho and Serena. Her scheduled marriage is mentioned in the text as the third union between Stilicho's family and the Theodosian dynasty. Following those of Stilicho to Serena and Maria, the daughter, to Honorius, Stilicho was the Magister Militum of the Western Roman Empire. He was the only known person to hold the rank of Magister Militum in Praecenter from 394 to 408 in both the Western and the Eastern Roman Empire. He was also titled Magister Equitum Apoditum, placing him in charge of both the cavalry and infantry forces of the Western Roman Empire. In 408, Arcadius died and was succeeded by his son Theodosius II, only seven years old. Stilicho planned to proceed to Constantinople and undertake the management of the affairs of Theodosius, convincing Honorius not to travel to the east himself. Shortly after, Olympius, an officer of rank in the court guards, attempted to convince Honorius that Stilicho was in fact inspiring to depose Theodosius II, to replace him with Eucherius. Olympius proceeded to lead the military coup d'acute TAT which left him in control of Honorius and his court. Stilicho was arrested and executed on August 22, 408. Arcarius sought refuge in Rome but was arrested there by Arsacius and Tarentius, two eunuchs following imperial command. They executed him not long after. Honorius appointed Tarentius imperial chamberlain, and gave the next post under him to Arsacius. Their deaths left Placidia effectively unattached. First marriage. In the disturbances that followed the fall of Stilicho, throughout the Italian peninsula the wives and children of the Fodorati were slain. The Fodorati were considered loyalists of Stilicho and treated accordingly. The natural consequence of all this was that these men, to the number of 30,000, flocked to the camp of Alaric I, king of the Visigoths, clamoring to be led against their cowardly enemies. Alaric accordingly led them across the Julian Alps and, in September 408, stood before the Aurelian walls and began a strict blockade. 
Rome was under siege, with minor interruptions, from 408 to August 24, 410. Zosimus records that Placidia was within the city during the siege, when Serena was accused of conspiring with Alaric, the whole Senate therefore, with Placidia, uterine sister to the emperor, thought it proper that she should suffer death. Her reasons for concurring to the execution of her cousin are not stated in the account. Prior to the fall of Rome, Placidia was captured by Alaric. Her captivity was recorded by both Dordanus and Marcellinus comes, though the exact circumstances are not mentioned. She followed the Visigoths in their move from the Italian peninsula to Gaul in 412. Their ruler Artulf, having succeeded Alaric, entered an alliance with Honorius against Jovinus and Sebastianus. Rival Western Roman emperors located in Gaul, he managed to defeat and execute both Gallo-Roman emperors in 413. After the heads of Sebastianus and Jovinus arrived at Honorius' court in Ravenna in late August, to be forwarded for display among other usurpers on the walls of Carthage. Relations between Artulf and Honorius improved sufficiently for Artulf to cement him by marrying Galla Placidia at Narbonne on January 1414. The nuptials were celebrated with high Roman festivities and magnificent gifts from the Gothic booty. Priscus Italus gave the wedding speech, a classical epithalamium. The marriage was recorded by Hydatius. The historian Jordanus states that they married earlier, in 411 at Forum Livii. Jordans's date may actually be when she and the Gothic king first became more than captor and captive. Placidia and Artulf had a single known son, Theodosius. He was born in Barcelona by the end of 414. Theodosius died early in the following year, thus eliminating an opportunity for a Romano Visigothic line. Years later the corpse was exhumed and reburied in the imperial mausoleum in Old Street, Peter's Basilica, Rome. In Hispania, Artulf imprudently accepted into his service a man identified as Dubius or Aberwulf, a former follower of Saris. Saris was a Germanic chieftain who was killed while fighting under Jovinus and Sebastianus. His follower harbored a secret desire to avenge the death of his beloved patron, and so, in the palace at Barcelona, the man brought Artalf's reign to a sudden end by killing him while he bathed in August, September, 415. The Amali faction proceeded to proclaim Sigeric, a brother of Saris, as the next king of the Visigoths. According to the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbon, the first act of Sigerac's reign was the inhuman murder of Artulf's six children from a former marriage whom he tore, without pity, from the feeble arms of a venerable bishop. As for Galla Placidia, as Artulf's widow, she was treated with cruel and wanton insults by being forced to walk more than twelve miles on foot among the crowd of captives driven ahead of the mounted Sigeric. Seeing the noble widow's sufferings, however, became one of the factors that roused indignant opponents of the usurper, who quickly assassinated Sigeric and replaced him with Walla, Artulf's relative. Second marriage According to the Chronicon Albaldinsa, included in the Roda Codex, Waller was desperate for food supplies. He surrendered to Constantius III, at the time Magister Militum of Honorius, negotiating terms giving Fodrati status for the Visigoths. Placidia was returned to Honorius as part of the peace treaty. Her brother Honorius forced her into marriage to Constantius III on January 1, 417. The daughter Justigrata Honoria was probably born in 417 or 418. The history of Paul the Deacon mentions her first among the children of the marriage, suggesting that she was the eldest. Their son Valentinian III was born July 2, 419. Placidia intervened in the succession crisis following the death of Pope Zosimus on December 26, 418. Two factions of the Roman clergy had proceeded to elect their own popes, the first electing Eulalius and the other electing Boniface I. 
they acted as rival popes, both in Rome, and their factions plunged the city into tumult. Symmachus, prefect of Rome, sent his report to the imperial court at Ravenna, requesting an imperial decision on the matter. Placidia and, presumably, Constantius petitioned the emperor in favor of Eulalius. This was arguably the first intervention by an emperor in the papal election. Honorius initially confirmed Eulalius as the legitimate pope. As this failed to put an end to the controversy, Honorius called a synod of Italian bishops at Ravenna to decide the matter. The synod met from February to March 419 but failed to reach a conclusion. Honorius called a second synod in May, this time including Gaulish and African bishops. In the meantime, the two rival popes were ordered to leave Rome. As Easter approached, however, Eulalius returned to the city and attempted to seize the Basilica of St. John Lateran in order to preside at the Paschal ceremonies. Imperial troops managed to repel him, and on Easter the ceremonies were led by a Chius, Bishop of Spoleto. The conflict cost Eulalius the imperial favor, and Boniface was proclaimed the legitimate pope as of April 3, 419. Returning to Rome a week later, Placidia had personally written to the African bishops, summoning them to the Second Synod. Three of her letters are known to have survived. On February 8, 421, Constantius was proclaimed in Augustus, becoming co-ruler with the childless Honorius. Placidia was proclaimed in Augusta. She was the only empress in the West, since Honorius had divorced his second wife Ermensha in 408 and had never remarried. Neither title was recognized by Theodosius II, the Eastern Roman Emperor. Constantius reportedly complained about the loss of personal freedom and privacy that came with the imperial office. He died of an illness on September 2, 421. Widow, Galla Placidia herself was now forced from the Western Empire, though the motivation for this remains unclear. The public issue was the increasingly scandalous public caresses she received from her own brother Honorius. This at least was the interpretation of Olympia Doris of Thebes, a historian used as a source by Zosimus, Suzoman and probably Philostorgius, as J.F. Matthews has demonstrated. Gibbon had a different opinion. The power of Placidia, and the indecent familiarity of her brother, which might be no more than the symptoms of a childish affection, were universally attributed to incestuous love, according to Gibbon, on a sudden, by some base intrigues of a steward and a nurse. This excessive fondness was converted into an irreconcilable quarrel. The debates of the emperor and his sister were not long confined within the walls of the palace, and as the Gothic soldiers adhered to their queen, the city of Ravenna was agitated with bloody and dangerous tumults, which could only be appeased by the forced or voluntary retreat of Placidia and her children. The royal exiles landed at Constantinople, soon after the marriage of Theodosius, during the festival of the Persian victories. They were treated with kindness and magnificence, but as the statues of the Emperor Constantius had been rejected by the Eastern Court, the title of Augusta could not decently be allowed to his widow. The passage places the arrival of Placidia and her children after the marriage of Theodosius II to Elia Eudocia, known to have occurred on June 7, 421. The Persian victories mentioned were probably victory celebrations over a brief Roman Sassanid War of 421-22, under the respective leadership of Theodosius II and Bahram V of the Sassanid Empire. The general Ardaborius operated in Arzanine and gained a victory, Autumn 421, which forced the Persians to retreat to Nisibis, which Ardaborius then besieged. He raised the siege on the arrival of an army under Vararan, who proceeded to attack Resena. Meanwhile the Saracens of Hira, under Almunder, were sent to invade Syria, and were defeated by Vitianus. During the peace negotiations the Persians attacked the Romans and were defeated by Procopius, son-in-law of Anthemius. 
The Empress Eudocia celebrated the war in a poem in heroic meter. The Saracens of Hira were the Lachmids of Al Hira. On August 15, 423, Honorius died of dropsy, perhaps pulmonary edema, with no member of the Theodosian dynasty present at Ravenna to claim the throne. Theodosius II was expected to nominate a Western co emperor. However, Theodosius hesitated and the decision was delayed. Taking advantage of the power vacuum, Castanus the patrician proceeded to become a kingmaker. He declared Joannus, the primaserius notariorum, to be the new Western Roman emperor. Among their supporters was Flavius Aetius. Aetius was a son of Flavius Gordentius, Magister Militum, and Aurelia. Joanna's rule was accepted in the provinces of Italia, Gaul, Hispania, but not in Africa province. Theodosius II reacted by preparing Valentinian III for eventual promotion to the imperial office. In 423-424, Valentinian was named Nobilis Amuse. In 424, Valentinian was betrothed to Licinia Eudoxia, his first cousin once removed. She was a daughter of Theodosius II and Aelia Eudocia. The year of their betrothal was recorded by Marcellinus Cums. At the time of their betrothal, Valentinian was approximately four years old, Licinia only two. Gibbon attributes the betrothal to the agreement of the three females who governed the Roman world, meaning Placidia and her nieces, Eudocia and Pulcheria. In the same year, Valentinian was proclaimed a Caesar in the Eastern Court. The campaign against Joannis also started in the same year. Forces of the Eastern Roman army gathered at Thessaloniki and were placed under the general command of Ardaboreus the victorious general of the Roman-Persian War. The invasion force was to cross the Adriatic Sea by two routes. Ispar, son of Ardaboreus, led the cavalry by land, following the coast of the Adriatic from the western Balkans to northern Italy. Placidia and Valentinian joined this force. Ardaboreus and the infantry boarded ships of the Eastern Roman navy in an attempt to reach Ravenna by sea. Aspar marched his forces to Aquileia, taking the city by surprise and with virtually no resistance. The fleet, on the other hand, was dispersed by a storm. Oedaboreus and two of his galleys were captured by forces loyal to Joannis and were held prisoners in Ravenna. Oedaboreus was treated well by Joannis, who probably intended to negotiate with Theodosius for an end to the hostilities. The prisoner was allowed the courteous freedom of walking the court and streets of Ravenna during his captivity. He took advantage of this privilege to come into contact with the forces of Joannis and convince some of them to defect to Theodosius' aside. The conspirators contacted Aspar and beckoned him to Ravenna. A shepherd led Aspar's cavalry force through the marshes of the Po River to the gates of Ravenna, with the besiegers outside the walls and the defectors within. The city was quickly captured. Joannis was taken and his right hand cut off, he was then mounted on a donkey and paraded through the streets, and finally beheaded in the Hippodrome of Aquileia. With Joannis dead, Valentinian was officially proclaimed the new Augustus of the Western Roman Empire on October 23, 425, in the presence of the Roman Senate. Three days following Joanna's death, Aetius brought reinforcements for his army, a reported number of 60,000 Huns from across the Danube. After some skirmishing, Placidia and Aetius came to an agreement that established the political landscape of the Western Roman Empire for the next 30 years. The Huns were paid off and sent home, while Aetius received the position of Magister Militum Pagalius.